Welcome back to Ballhead and Metal guys and welcome back to another reaction. Today I wanted to do something special. I wanted to react to the full album from Meshuggah Catch 33. Now this is coming from a person who's not a fan yet of Meshuggah and actually I've been having a very hard time understanding kind of getting into this band. For anybody who has seen my reactions, there's been one or two songs I really like, Rational Gaze and Bleed, and other songs I just can't understand. I just understand there's some kind of magic in this band that I'm for some reason not understanding yet. And for some reason, for example, I'm playing Bleed on repeat for some reason, I really got into the song, and I'm starting to understand where they're coming from with this band. And I thought, I mean, you know what? I need to sit down from beginning to the end listen to an album. I know it's a risky proposition because of how hard I've been trying to get into them and I have been able to. Uh, but perhaps if you take the journey with me and see what it's all about, uh, you'll see maybe a transformation from a person who's not a fan into a fan. Or maybe I'll leave the same by the end where I still won't, won't really understand what this band is all about. I've kind of understood its polyrhythmic and kind of very intricate structure that it has to the music but also just the, the the pure rhythm of it almost like entrancing style that it has uh with that being said you guys highly highly recommend the catch 33 uh i got my water ready i am in for it it's a 47 minute thing i'm gonna try to stop less uh if i can because i know there's a lot of shorter songs here so perhaps i might even stop once per song uh mainly because i want things to really play out to get into rhythm uh, hopefully that doesn't get the video blocked. Uh, let's get into it and let's see what we got. I'm excited for this one, but I'm also kind of a little bit scared. We're going to start with the song Autonomy Lost. Yeah, it's kind of building. It has this kind of very ominous build. Uh, what I would say is probably an intro uh, song, mainly because there's no vocals yet, right? Um, I'm starting to understand this concept from this band that there's these switch-ups that if you don't really listen carefully, you will miss it. And the production, first of all, is great. So I'm already on board with the production and just kind of, I'm enjoying this main rhythm. I'm, just, I'm starting to try to approach it from a, a side of the way you guys kind of taught me the idea that it's a, the guitars are percussion instruments and just get into the rhythm of it and let it flow. I see what you guys were talking about. It's not really uh, 13 songs here. It just flows from one to the other. It's one long song that they kind of broke up into sections. Now I get it. I, I, I totally remember you guys telling me that in the comments and I just kind of forgot about it before I started the album. Uh, but we're onto the imprint of the unsaved. And so far, I'm on board. I'm really, really liking this.
it was even hard for me to be honest when I was listening first to this band and then I like headbanging when I listen to music and the more I like it the more I headbang and I was having a hard time headbanging because right the rhythm is all like from what I understand the, the, the drummer predominantly plays 4x4 four four, and sometimes the guitarists play in different time signatures and just kind of trying to sync the whole thing up could be probably that's where I, I, I think the appreciation came from is I listened to what you guys said and I list, uh, looked to like some breakdowns of guitars drums and kind of how we can all come together and holy moly when you see the complexity of it and how it all comes together uh, it's absolutely insane um, but I am not listening on that wavelength right now I am trying my best to just let go let go of the logical and let the more emotional side come in because that's how I interpret music generally emotionally and so far it just just has this aggressiveness and this kind of um, intensity to it without being the fastest thing that you ever heard that's just it, it got my attention Honestly, don't know why they broke it down. Uh, do you really think like the fans of Meshuggah would care if this is just one long song? Uh, for example, the the famous ones from Edge of Sanity, uh, Insomnium. Uh, I'm trying to think of other bands that did the one al one song albums. Green Carnation. I mean, it, it's an experience. Yes, it might be more niche and not for everybody, but it's an experience. I think you should just take the journey on. And I've also actually been taught since I was a kid uh, by my father and both my brother is this idea of listen to the band fully, like listen to the album from beginning to the end. Give the artist its due because they intend for it to be listened this way. And then, you know, you can pick out songs and do whatever you like, but at the very least, give it one listen. And when I started doing that, I appreciate songs that I otherwise would have skipped uh, over a long period of time. I really like that part when they stop and instead of doing like harsh vocals he just had this almost like a movie voice right it was really creepy really well done I really liked kind of where he came with that from and I think I'm gonna yeah I'm wearing disenchantment on a song but it's just the flow of it the way it just goes from one thing to the other and yeah you could see subtly the the, the rhythms changing I'm not I can't even say riffs because I don't I don't think the tradition the idea of traditional riffs doesn't really apply here they just the way it flows uh you're you're hearing what almost seems like to be in the same rhythm but it's not it's just a weird feeling it's like it's it's in the same rhythm but it's not the same rhythm or it'll be the same rhythm but it doesn't feel the same 
it just has this kind of a weird feeling and it takes you into the kind of a weird psychological place at least for me it does Paradoxical spiral, okay. This is so fucking weird. It's so weird and so different. I'd, you know, I, I would say like avant-garde almost, like in the way they just kind of approach music writing. And this whole beginning, this guitar riffing that he's doing almost sounds like a bee flying, right? Uh, and just how easily it switched from disenchantment to the paradoxical uh, spiral into a completely different, different rhythm. Like right now for me, I'm not gonna even say things like I like this or dislike this. It's it's like an experience uh, when you're listening to this. It's literally like an experience of something foreign. thing you know that i i um i almost criticize myself for and that this happens to everybody is as you're listening to music and i'm letting it play out much longer than i usually do uh because i want to get in the groove of thing but the mind wanders and you feel like wait wait, 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 wait how do we get to this section and that's just you know that's my own fault it's not the music itself uh but the mind wandering it's it becomes an element for this band where we're listening to this multiple multiple times and you will be able to catch all the subtleties of things uh I mean, this is true of any good music. Um, you know, if you listen to Cardi B, it's... I don't mean to pick on hip-hop. I do like hip-hop. But, you know, there's not much to dive into and really dissect and re-listen and really take in. Uh, this is layered. And, yeah, so far, I'm... I'm like I said, it's an experience, and I'm 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 going through it, looking at the name of the songs. But like I said, it's just letting it flow.
man, just the way it switches uh, with the song right now we're re in, in animate. Uh, I just love how everything gets flipped on its head a little bit. Uh, every time, so I guess these sections, the way they break it down, like every time it switches to this other section, it just let's twist it a little bit. Let's twist it a little bit. So I guess I'm starting to understand the thinking. It's not because it's a different part, like a different song within the, within the album. It, it's like, no, let's, whenever this rhythm gets switched and flipped on its head, this is when we're going to break and it's going to be a different song. Yeah, this getting into this band is hard work. Um, I had this happen with Green Carnation when I listened to the full album because of just how much was going on and the patience that I required. And I remember listening to it the first time and I didn't like it. And my brother was just like, Are you insane? Actually, Death, I didn't like Symbolic and Sound of Perseverance when I first hear, heard it. That's the first two albums I heard. And I didn't like it because the, the, the way the riffs were written for like Death, the way he had, how he was, how much, how progressive he was in those albums, I just, I just couldn't grab onto it. I couldn't latch onto it. Sepultura Arise was insane for me. And it's coming back and listening to them again and listening to them again because I think that there's such a thing as I like it and I dislike it. But there are bands that are just so influential to music or the genre of music you might be into that it's important to know them. For example, you might not be the biggest fan of classical music, but it's important to know classical music and the roots that are brought. Blues, jazz, just because I don't like jazz music, it doesn't discredit jazz. As a matter of fact, there's a part of me, it's like I need to get into this uh, as a serious music lover because a different world will be opened up to you. And Meshuga, 100%, I don't think anybody really leans into this math metal, gent metal, like it's a fucking mathematical equation that I'm listening to here. Nobody really leans into, the, into it this hard that I know more than Meshuga. You know, there's like Ginger's been uh, talked about as a band, a big band in gent, especially in their recent albums. And... Their structures for songs to me sound like simple in comparison to this, meaning like they sound more traditional. Not that they're better or worse. They sound more traditional. This is like, I'm literally, I feel like uh, uh, I'm on an alien planet talking to aliens uh, when I'm listening to this. And that's the intrigue for me.
Yeah, see what what when I first listened to this band and I heard like this, I almost thought it was like uh, pretentious to be honest. Like, oh, I'm like, are they just being pretentious? Like, oh, we're gonna do something different that nobody's ever heard before. And I fucking hate that from bands where they purposely trying to do something different for the sake of being different and not because it's a natural evolution for the band or just who they are as, a, as musicians. Um, and that's what I thought of Meshuggah. I didn't know the history of how long they've been around and basically they invented the genre. Uh, and for me, the hard part as I've listened so far and I got into Entrapment, is this, that there's there's no ever a hook with Meshuga. There is no hook. There is no section where you go, oh, yeah, that's a cool section. It It's... It's not about necessarily... No matter, like, they're really good musicians, right? You know, I had the bra- breakdown of Hake and how good of a drummer he is, but it's not about his drumming. It's not about the guitars. It's not about the vocals. It's the sum of its parts that really make it work. Without one element out of the song, it just doesn't work the same. And I'm starting to understand about this band. And it's not something... My brother said this to me when I was younger, and I never understood it until maybe recently, maybe a couple of years ago. This idea of like sometimes you're going to watch a movie. We'll, we'll talking about a movie, but it applies. It's like sometimes you're going to watch a movie and you're not going to like it. But you will you said that I, I I'm glad that I've seen it. And for example, for him was the movie A Clockwork Orange. He did not like the movie by the end of the movie, but he appreciated everything he saw and understood its monumental quality and importance. Um, I can't say particularly to that extent that I am I don't want to listen to this again, but just because I'm not fully in tune the way you guys are with this band but at the same time i'm starting to just it's starting to click what it is about this band that people just keep saying it and it's a matter of time of me giving this like almost like homework to myself to get on that same wavelength into minds and mirrors complete switch up right just going to 180 My own reflection within the twin and same Engaged in the mirror act of chewing away at the shell of my attacking self The paradox, unseen, treacherous, this deceit To make no choice matter to having yet lose yourself Until finally this i can tell even when i get into this band fully or if i get into this band fully it's never going to be a band i turn on a lot uh there's a couple bands like that that i have that i just absolutely love them but they're not the thing i would listen to day to day at the very least that this particular album is just so out of this world and weird um like literally anything i've listened to up to this point sounds more norm like the norm of what you're gonna hear 
I, I haven't heard anything really ever that is this so far out of the norm. Except like some some avant-garde songs or like or avant-garde bands that will influence some like hardcore punk, which they're fucking not music to me personally. It's just it's just like too much, too far out, too much of so hard, trying so hard to be different. Um but yeah, let's keep going. All the reasons why I've forgotten To live through one's own shadow Mute and blinded Is to really see Eclipse the golden mirror And the reflection is set free Yeah, this section is really fucking creeping me out. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, the, the, just the process of sitting down and writing something like this. Um, I would very much to talk, like to talk to Meshuggah. Or somebody from Meshuggah, maybe one of the guitarists. But just to see how they write music. And just kind of what was the, what was the thing that just like clicked in their brain and made them want to go in this direction i think they took a very hard path in music because they could this could have very much completely faded away into obscurity because of how different and wild it is but it looks like just people were on board with what they were doing and they just picked up and created a genre i mean i guess that's how it always works right you're, you're in danger of failing when trying something new but in some cases it succeeds and people just kind of get it and it, it for a long time a lot of people told me that uh, miss sugar is a musician's band uh and that's what kind of drove me away from it like oh well, like i'm never going to be able to get it so I said, then why even try why get into it uh because i don't i don't play any instruments i played guitar in a very novice level for two years i wasn't very like i play i can play rhythm uh guitar decently like i, I played metal songs rhythm songs that weren't too difficult See, like things like this do test my patience to be honest because i understand you're building suspense or you're building atmosphere but it's like three minutes of that that's what then that's where it's hard for me to get to a band like this like what is the point um what is the point of going for this long what is the intention um i mentioned this recently and when i was reviewing one album and i mentioned opet's blackwater park and it had that infamous two and a half minutes of just like this like calm melody, which was nice. But after like a minute and a half, I was like, okay, like what what is the point? I, I know from a couple of people that I, I, I shared uh, the new album from Tool. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Fear Inoculum. A lot of people thought every single song was just like, why do they stretch out every single song? What is what is the point? What is the artistic point? Uh, and honestly, I that I don't get. Cause there's not much going on musically.
Okay, and then it kind of fades away, right? Yeah, this one I, I don't I don't get this song at all. At least this section. See, this kicks in i fucking love like this style of meshuggah i love i just love this what i understand that rhythm i'm behind it i got it i'm in it it's just it kind of it kind of drives you right it's like a a, a rope that pulls you into different directions and you just kind of go along with it uh but like mind mirrors i i just don't get it don't get it. i just do not understand what was the point of that song if it lasts at maybe a minute, a minute and a half, I can understand like an interesting, creepy transition. But for four and a half like minutes, I just don't get it. Uh, and that's kind of my honest opinion. Uh, that's my raw action, you know, like a reaction is my raw feeling of this reaction. And it's always been, I've always asked this question and, it, and artists always create these things. And is it is it for for mystery, for atmosphere? Why keep it this long? Like, uh, my, my big one I criticize, my brother have arguments about this all the time, is Metallica's Injustice for All. I think every single song in Injustice for All is about a minute to a minute and a half too long. You know, uh, and he argues with me, he goes, no, I love that they replay the chorus or, or a specific, specific riff ten times. I'm like, what the fuck I need to hear it ten times for? What is the point? Are you artificially inflating this? Like, what is the fucking point? Uh, and that's so far the only element in this album to me. is like, what was the fuck is the point of that? Uh, but then automatically they pulled me in back with In Death Is Life. And perhaps that is the whole point. Um, it's, just, it's just such an artistic way of doing it. Uh, this is like the most non-commercial band that's commercially successful that I can think of. I fucking love this. This is the best song so far, best section that I heard. I have, I, I want to rewind it right away, right from the beginning. But I'm gonna keep listening to it and just come back to it after I finish the reaction. Holy shit, I like this. Yeah, when they're in this element of like what I would call metal element, 
because they have like these atmospheric moments. I've never gotten in just into atmospheric bands. I like when there is elements of atmosphere, but it's not the main element. Um, when they're in this kind of like just heavy, aggressive, intensive, I I am so on board with that. I I really like it. Sorry about that. And I'm really getting an understanding of the rhythm, flowing with the rhythm. Um, yeah, so so far in death is life. Love it, and how it transitioned to in death is death, which is going to be the longest song in the album. Yeah, you know, as I don't, I've gotten used to, to to recognizing complexity when it comes to um, certain riffs or guitars or solos or drums, and I think it's more on the person who was not a musician, and the level of appreciation in terms of like time signatures, I can only understand it a little bit because I only delved a little bit into it, uh, but. I don't fully understand that difficulty. And I've had this feeling of with Meshuggah is just because something is complex, why is it automatically good? Or does it make it automatically good was more the question. Uh, because it seems like when I would do a reaction and whether I liked it, disliked it, confused, left completely indifferent, um, it was always mentioned to me how complex something is and how how many layers it has and all these things that it has and now i'm like well it doesn't automatically make it good acdc is super simple and they're just one of the best bands in the world because they're just just it's hard to make a good simple song that you want to hear over and over and over again um and there's a few different feeling with Meshuggah. it's just i don't want to hear many of the songs over and over again but i'm also intrigued to keep going uh, this happens again with movies, it happens with video games with me, uh, for any of the video game fans that happened to me with Death Stranding, where sometimes it's not fun, but the, the emotions it's able to kind of evoke is more important sometimes. And I guess that's happening to me right now with Meshuggah, because I'm just, I'm all over the place. There's, 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 there is boredom, but then there is excitement, there's this, this aggression, this, it, it definitely evokes a lot more emotion for me than something I stereotypically like typically would be listening to, unless it's some good old death metal like Bolt Thrower or Asphyx. That I just I just go crazy till things are like Exodus. Uh, they really get me going. <laughs>
Yeah, it sometimes feel like uh, this music was written by a robot in a computer. Like if you told like Siri write music, uh, and this is what she would come up with. You know, and like it's almost devoid of soul, but it's written by like it's it's a weird feel. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, it's it's this song. I am a little bit so far kind of all over the place with it uh, because I am not sure. I was just so into the last one, and then it kind of went to this. I want to see how it progresses. We're only three minutes into this. Ten more minutes left on this one. I got what this makes me feel like. For those of you who ever saw, uh, what is that Steven Spielberg movie about aliens? I mean, he made a lot of them. This reminds me of uh, Encounters of a Third Kind from Steven Spielberg at the end when they're playing that piano and they realize through music they're able to communicate with aliens. I'm getting that same feeling of watching that scene, listening to this music, this particular song, I would say. You know, also listening to this, it reminds me, I'm trying to think of what um, movie it was, but there's a couple of movies where they always make fun of this idea that in the future is going to be so, the music is going to be so different. I think it was either Fifth Element or something, where the music becomes so different 
that somebody from the past is going to look at us like, what the fuck is this? And I'm sure if you showed to somebody this 30 years ago, they would literally think it's like satanic, like just like spells being casted uh, because it's just so, so different. I mean, uh, then again, from what I understand, please correct me here. Metal has broken um, a lot of rules in music writing. Uh, and this is just the next step in that. And it's also implementing a lot of jazz or like improvisational or, or what kind of whatever kind of jazz kind of influence because jazz has a lot of these same elements of just weirdness that I could never get into and unless it's like smooth jazz smooth jazz is very easy to get into uh, but let's keep going let's see what we have here I feel like talking to the band members from this band, probably they're very weird individuals. I don't see a person with linear thinking or traditional thinking writing something like this. Uh, you know, like when they say like a genius is typically could be a little bit like weird or off putting or like listen to Elon Musk talk. I feel like a fucking alien is talking sometimes, you know, and this guy's a genius in comparison to what he's kind of created and what he's done. Uh, yeah, I feel like they'll be the same thing with Meshuggah. I think they'd just be really fucking weird dudes to talk to. I'd be very surprised if they're just like regular down-to-earth dudes. see another kind of soft part here like this for sure can be a soundtrack to some kind of an alien movie or a horror movie but to be in music to listen to on a CD over and over again again part of my ignorance I guess you can call it that I just don't get it um like moments like that where it just kind of goes into this tangent of let's go for two minutes of playing like very simplistic like moment i i just i just don't get it Hopefully it's going to kick up into a notch and just kind of go into high gear again. I, mean, I guess you do need a break, but like, come on.
I'm do enjoy the build up where like you can tell it's going into a different place right now uh, until it eventually gets into this hyper aggressive moment. Um, I just wished it was shorter. Yeah, again, see the same point. I, I don't mean to be sounding like a broken record, but it's like, just what is the point? Like, how is this supposed to be like music you listen to? You know, I, 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 there's songs in here, like the first, what was it? First six, really good. Really enjoyed the first six loved eight absolutely loved eight did not like seven minds mirrors don't i don't think i like this particular song and death is death because it's just like five to ten minutes of just like this like soothing creepy eerie sound and at some point i'm just like oh so i have to make sure i text my client after this it's just it fades my mind fades maybe it speaks to my generation um, even though I'm 34, I'm still a millennium, maybe it speaks to our generation of, like, we just can't focus, whatever you want to call it, but I, I, I just don't, let me keep going. You can tell it's going to pick up and shed is gonna be just like this faster song. Because in itself, the melody is actually quite creepy and, and, and it has something in it. It, it just, it, for me, they overstay their welcome. And let's transition. I really like the bass here. The way the bass is coming in strong and really punchy in the face, that I'm really liking. You know what it is? I basically like their more traditional sounding songs. I'm really into them. It's, it's, the, it's the atmospheric, psychedelic, weird, kind of avant-garde-ish songs that I'm just kind of a little bit uh, iffish about.
see this i like i like that switch from this more aggressive to this kind of like like almost again like groovyish kind of like creepyish thing and there's a lot of groove in this particular song um yeah this one they, they got me back with this one again and it's like i'm going on an emotional roller coaster of what i like what i dislike i feel like it's going to be a band that forever will be a band that i don't like all the songs and i tend to skip to the ones that i like but the ones i like i really like and that tends to be an issue with me i i I would say it's a 70 30 where 70 percent of the time i don't like all the songs and 30 percent of the time is like wow i liked every single song on this album uh because i tend to be kind of um sometimes impatient uh picky person uh i know these are not positive qualities but i am who i am and i've tried to shed some of those <laughs> name of the song shed uh, i try to shed some of those bad traits but they can't all go away and I, maybe sometimes I feel like I am justified in the way I feel if I'm honest with you. I have no problem with the song. I like this one. I like. Uh, it's also for the exception of "In Death Is Life." It's a thing with this band where almost it's never like this immediate feeling of instant gratification with this band. Uh, it, it's something like you earn your satisfaction. Almost, it's like you have to put in work to get that satisfaction. For me personally. I feel like you guys threw me in the loop for this particular album, if I'm honest. The guys who recommended it to me, I think you already grew into this band and you have a love for this band. And you feel like other people should really listen to this and enjoy it. But perhaps this might have been not the best album for me to start with. Despite the fact that I was able to find moments of enjoyment. I think what I'm going to do after this is I'm just going to listen to their discography. I was really waiting. I'm like, oh, I'll do more albums on this channel. It's hard for me to do a full album reaction uh, because I have very limited time to record reactions. And I try to get a bunch in, in, in there. Uh, but I thought I kind of owed it to a lot of Meshuggah fans because you guys kept asking to do a full album reaction.
I'm in dehumanization now. We went through Persona Non Grata. Uh, sometimes I feel also with this band that there's an excess, an excess of wanting to be different, an excess of uh, these weird ideas, uh, an excess. And again, it's just raw. Re I'm giving you like a 100% raw reactions, not giving a fuck what anybody would think, because I think it's important sometimes to get inside the head of a person how they feel 100%. And that's the kind of the emotional side of it coming out, coming out. And then there's there's, there's a, a more logical side, which is the reason why I gave this whole album a chance. It's like they've just, they've garnered this following, almost like a religious cult because of their importance. And there's so many people that admire them that I admire, like uh, Tools, uh, drummer was it, uh, Danny Seri, or Bill Burr, comedian who really loves Meshuga. Uh, all, all these things that cul culminate into why I felt like I needed to do this. band like uh yeah the only one i th I, I don't not very much into the gent um uh genre of music at least i haven't gotten into it yet i I've, I've, I've you know there's there's certain genres we take time to kind of get into I'm not a big fan of power metal either definitely what i've heard from gent what i mentioned before that those other bands just they they, they just sound like traditional regular bands ginger to me, it sounds like a traditional regular band now after listening to this, and I thought they were pretty weird. Uh, I which I didn't connect with Ginger at all, to be honest. I liked their metalcore-ish days more than I liked their later days. And again, it's a preface thing. It's what we like, what we dislike, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, let's keep going. Something I haven't mentioned, his vocals are fucking crazy. And we got the last song, Sung, 
uh, seven minute and 18 minute song. I'm gonna do a review after this as well. Uh, just kind of, I think it's gonna be more of a thoughts thing or review. We'll see how it goes. Oh, don't tell me it's gonna be another mild one. No. You know, I'm really interested now to just kind of listen to musicians or people talk about Meshuggah and what is it with them that resonates about this particular band. <sighs> Man, because I'm honestly just having a flood of various emotions. And like I said, I am going to go through as many of their discographies as I can because I can't make up a decision about a band at least until I do that. But now there is a live interest to do this, but it's work. It's work getting through a lot of it. And as I mentioned before, it doesn't particularly feel fun throughout. Uh, there, there's, there's, there's moments in time where I've done reactions. I started doing reaction. It was so bad. I literally turned off the reaction and did something else. And this is not it. This is not that. It's not disgust, hate. Um, even dislike it's just it, it feels like uh, when you put a try and put a triangle in a circular shape like a circular in insert and it just doesn't fit I enjoy experimentation like Tools, Fear, Inoculum. I very much enjoyed that experimentation in, in like just trying something different. Even like this last song, I don't hear much vocals. It's just him doing the yells and the screams, which are nice the first fucking time he did it. And now they're just, they've lost me. This, this last song, it's just like, I'm just not, I don't know.
You know, I was gonna pick between the album where Bleed was on or this album to do a reaction to. And I picked this one mainly because of the fans' requests overwhelmingly picking this album. <sighs> this doesn't make me hopeful for understanding the band. I have a feeling that there's always gonna be particular songs I like from Meshuga. But overall, I'll never get the ban. Please don't don't tell me they're gonna have this kind of a calm rhythm for three minutes. See, as, as the song ends, what I'm doing right now is I'm gathering my thoughts and trying really hard not just to be emotional and not just to be logical. It's trying to find a good sweet spot in the middle to really convey my thoughts. As you can see, it's because I've been doing the reaction for a while. She's really bored and she wants my attention. So she just kind of jumped up onto my lap and wants to explore. So I'm going to just let her do that. I don't think you guys mind. Honestly, guys, I'm going to stop it there because it doesn't seem like it's going to change. It's going to keep doing that. Because um, I want to get to the review. So, the way I feel about it, the more emotional, raw kind of reaction, is there's definitely songs I like here. I liked, essentially, from 1 to 6, uh, Autonomy Lost, Imprint of the Unsaved, Disenchantment, The Paradoxical Spiral, Reanimate, Reinanimate, uh, Entrapment. Uh, I liked those songs, and I kind of grew to them, you know? But none of them really hooked me. And then In, Die In Death Is Life really hooked me. I really, really liked that one. From that point on, I didn't like anything else. I didn't like Mind's Mirror. I didn't like In Death is Death. I didn't like Shed, Persona non Grata, or Dehumanization, or some. Um, my initial gut feeling is I understand there's a complexity to this band. I understand there's, there's, there's a, a different level of difficulty to this band. I understand that they have a huge following. I understand all these things on, on a logical level. But I just don't connect with any of them because... 
it doesn't particularly sound like music to me uh, a lot of the things that i've heard and when it did sound like music like the, the calmer sections i don't think they were earned uh because there were so many of them for so long and there's almost zero way you could justify to me what was the point of them uh that's how i feel in the moment of kind of but i also logically understand that this band has been around for such a long time that they've garnered this kind of just fandom from everybody and how obsessed people with how good they are and what they do uh I'm, I feel like I'm never going to be one of those people that's just going to get it. Um, and I, I, I chalk it up to myself as well. I take the responsibility that it might just not be for me. Uh, I'm still, like I said, I'm still going to be giving all the albums a chance and I'm going to be checking them out. Perhaps there's more accessible albums from this band. Uh, because if there's anything in the vein of In Death Is Life more throughout their career, I'd be really in tune with that. And it's not a knock on the fans who really like this band. It's no way in that. It's more of like the just a... It's definitely an experience. I didn't come away from this saying I like this or I dislike this. All I can say is this was an experience. Uh, an experience I won't forget. But not an experience I'd want to repeat. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm going to leave with in terms of review about this. And... Hopefully you guys kind of understand where I'm coming from with this band. I would very, I'm more than, than ever interested into getting a chance one day to interview some of these guys about their approach of music writing and just pick their brain, what it is in their brain that's causing this kind of conundrum of music that's come out from this band for so many years and that how are, like, what is it that about the fans and this music that just they completely connect with? Because I will never connect with something just purely on the technical level. Uh, there has to be some something else. And for me, here, I didn't get it. I got it, really, I got it in one song. Uh, and believe me, I really like Rational Gaze. I really like Bleed. I really, really like In Death Is Life. Uh, so th there is things in this band that I like. But I feel like the rest of it is just... Yeah. Not for me. Guys, make sure to enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe out there. Keep it metal. And let me know your thoughts down below on this whole reaction. Uh, as I put an hour, almost and a half into it. Whoa. Guys, take care of yourselves.